Across the long history of Smash Brothers, there have been many an iconic character. Mario, Link, 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 Kakashi. But across all iterations of the series, there is one character that has always tied the games together. The announcer. He's the hype man for every character and every match. He is the voice of Smash Bros. Always fired up. Always cool. Always unbiased. Or is he? We all know the announcer has a cool voice line for every character, so that no matter who you pick, it's satisfying every time. But if you, like me, can never decide who to play or just like going through the game's audio clips, then you've probably noticed that some introductions stand out. For instance, the announcer is pretty dang scared of the villager, based on how menacing he makes him sound. That's the same tone he takes with characters like Dark Pit and Dark Samus. There's no Dark Villager, because the villager is already dark as heck. The dude is always gunning for a fight, and he smiles while dropping bowling balls on you. In Animal Crossing, you may be the only human in town, but you're more of an animal than anyone else there. Then there's Bayonetta, and while the tone is a bit subtle, there's a hint of surprise in the announcer's voice. It's as if the announcer inherited massive debt from his parents after they faked their death, and one night he's wandering around, all sad, when he passes by the enchanted jewel shop run by his good friend Bayonetta. In a moment of weakness, he breaks into the shop and starts grabbing everything. But then the lights turn on, and Bayonetta somersaults gotcha. into the shop, and the announcer looks up, shocked and ashamed, as he blurts out. Bayonetta! Then Bayonetta summons a bunch of demons to beat him up. Not all of the outlier voice lines are negative, though. The announcer and Daisy are clearly good pals. The announcer is probably a big fan of both Incineroar and Mega Man. And then you've got these four. Jigglypuff, Reninja, Luigi, and Bowser Jr. These four are clearly his favorites. I mean, if my name was Jigglypuff and I had a friend who said my name like, Hey, Jigglypuff, I'd have to confront them and say, Hey, what are we? Of those four, though, Luigi is the one the announcer is most fond of. I say this because one, they've known each other since the first Smash Bros, and two, the announcer knows Luigi's struggle. Throughout the Smash Bros. series, Luigi isn't given much of a spotlight. He's just sort of there, while his brother appears on all the covers. In Ultimate, Luigi isn't even in the opening cinematic. And while Luigi is overshadowed by Mario, the announcer is overshadowed by... Uh, the players? The characters? I'm not actually sure, but the point is, he's behind the curtain, much like Luigi. And that's why he's got this respect and sympathy for Luigi. Luigi clearly holds a special place in the announcer's heart. If Luigi was the troubled teen in a coming-of-age movie, the announcer would be the best friend that never stops believing in him. If Luigi was a game of Jenga, the announcer would be that one last piece supporting the entire weight and balance of the tower. If Luigi were a non-specific chocolate and cream cookie, the announcer would be milk, there to match it perfectly, no matter how many weird flavors and forms the cookie goes through. I mean, look at this. Spoons? Who approved this? Oh, that's pretty good. Ahem. <laughs> In conclusion, the announcer is bias and his favorite character is Luigi. It's actually pretty nice, you know. Luigi's always sort of ridiculed for being, well, Luigi. So I'm glad I'm not the only one who supports him. I, I mean, I'm not biased towards Luigi. The announcer is. How, how could I make this unbiased analysis of the announcer's bias if I was also biased? That would make it so easy for me to project my, my hypothetical adoration for Luigi onto the announcer, which is not, which is not what I have done. That's, that's, it's not, 
It's not what this is. It's not. 